just quickly like you to introduce so we have along with us artists and um, Nikhil Purohit who's a moderator for the event and Ishita Biswas she uh, facilitated the exhibition and got all the artists together I would just hand over to Ishita to introduce the session for today but just giving a brief introduction about her so Ishita Biswas is a visual artist and children's book designer from Delhi NCR she works with drawing, animation, video, installation, image making, and graphic design. With an interest in making alternative narrative accessible, she has been designing children's books since the past few years. And what I know about her is that she's uh, cleared her master's from uh, Ambedkar University, and that's how we became friends. So, Shita, over to you, and you can introduce the session for today. Thanks, Meher. Um, I'll just give a give a brief about how uh, like the thought of this exhibition began. Basically, uh, like I got into a conversation with Priya Sri, and uh, she uh, like talked about this idea of uh, having a book art exhibition uh, and rethinking what books could be and how uh, what books could be in contemporary art. Uh, this discussion happened in March, so I think March or before. So it, it was before this pandemic struck uh, here in India. So uh, it was supposed to be a, a physical exhibition. And so we were de developing thoughts uh, around it in a very different way from what is, it has uh, turned out now. Uh, but then uh, it, it became a different uh, kind of a uh, obviously different kind of a situation how to uh, uh, do this uh, virtually uh, something like uh, in one way it become uh, a bit a little bit easier um, than putting uh, physical work uh, virtually uh, that's how I was thinking because um, books are books have become digital now so we can always uh, put across ebooks and it could be a virtual exhibition but then uh, within that uh, a lot of uh, formats got explored because uh, when i was started looking for artists um, there's a huge uh, like it could be very vast and very vague also it, it doesn't have to follow a definition is that that's how i also started learning uh, while uh, looking for artists and what kind of artwork can come into this because books uh, only make you think of books how we see uh, so like thinking of uh, video as a book or basically I started thinking of the essence uh, uh, it's uh, it, is book just an object or it's about uh, multiple uh, narratives and the idea of multiple narratives is what um, uh, basically I started focusing upon so uh, and that's how we went forward and uh, I got to know that uh, previously our gallery was already has, has started this series of untitled exhibitions virtually so that's how uh, the the gallery team said that we can take it hey. virtual now sorry uh, so um, yeah, so that's how we decided that, OK, uh, let's see how it goes. And uh, the seven artists that finally uh, came together, uh, some of their practices are similar in certain ways, ways but then uh, uh, they are very, uh, some are very distinct uh, approaches. Uh, uh, like uh, somebody like Madhav, he's a, he's a comic artist. So that, that has, uh, like he has his own process of making uh, books but specifically focusing on the traditional uh, comic format of uh, books and uh, Parikshit's work I also came across his uh, work for the first time uh, uh, in this and uh, 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 like I, the idea of having a video which we can call a book and which is not like a book put together into a video it is different from that it's it's a video uh, becoming like we are calling a traditional uh, we're giving it a traditional term uh, of a book but it's actually a video so yeah like somehow I mean um, it's not dif this aspect is not defined for me now uh, if I look at this video I would generally uh, not call it a book 
so uh, it, so here it was interesting for me that how who defines it then like the artist can call it but uh, how the viewer will perceive it uh, unless we put it in this exhibition it, it will be called as video art so uh, and um, then um, rahi's work uh, i had seen recently um, Pratish's book also like I found similarities in, uh, in uh, both of their approaches, um, which is like uh, that's how basically I have mostly connected to uh, books which can be taken uh, like seen as a form of art, like hand-drawn books which can also become artist books, which can also become journal, and journal is something which. Uh, Madhav is anyway like his his project is actually he's displaying one of his uh, personal journals. Um, Veda's book um, I had known for some time now. She, it, it's a that's the only photo book uh, we have in this uh, exhibition, and um, so uh, that has a very personal approach uh, where like she has. Uh, explore the context through uh, through the point of view of a of another person so it's that person's narrative explaining uh, the whole uh, context um yeah and uh, again tilottama's book um, i had seen her work around um, in indie comic fests uh, and those kind of uh, places um so uh, i had i had known her work and i could find similarities uh, between her work and rahi's work and Pratish's work, not just formally, also uh, again the approach I was um, talking about. Durga Das, um, he's uh, he's basically a printmaker, and um, so when I got in touch with him, um, he was uh, like, yeah, I have a project, like I have an ongoing project, and um, I can put uh, some work in a book art exhibition, and I'll uh, create a book, um, but. He was not again. He wasn't seeing this as uh, continuous pages. Like he had a, a, a same theme running all over, and he was making uh, thematically from that approach. He was making prints, and um, he put them together. And he was like, "Okay, this is my book." But uh, he wasn't following. Like it, I think it could be fine with him if we put uh, his five or six images together. um maybe on a wall or on a screen and he will still call it a book uh, but we uh, kind of put it together in a traditional digital format to uh, like to present it in a virtual space which might differentiate it with other print other prints and a uh, you know, form of a book so uh, i don't know if if that's the only way to go about uh, this thing uh, specifically uh, in his work because i also kind of uh, like if i was thinking from my point of view if i have to uh, make drawings or any sort of images i would uh, maybe make 3 4 or 5 of them put them together but generally i wouldn't call it a book so so it's like at the same time while uh, this definition narrowing down to traditional forms it was also opening up uh, to vague possibilities but then uh, they were also getting too vague i i would say uh, i'm still not able to um, conclude um, sorry did the screen go blank am i visible yeah you are you are okay so um, yeah uh, so that's how things came together and um, we are also we are displaying them digitally obviously we are also doing uh, prints um, but uh, so it's not everybody's book is not going to uh, going into the print process right now uh, like and i was also a uh, bit confused like for somebody like madhav's book as i said it's a journal it's basically um, scanned images of a journal uh, put together all spreads of a journal and it is it's not uh, it's not speaking of a singular narrative um it's also a bit abstract you can't it doesn't communicate at once and uh but uh, my confusion was if if it has to be printed now um 
so how you scan a journal and print it and present it it's like how you reproduce that creating a page by uh, a book page by page by either by uh, by hand or digitally and then putting it together and printing and reproducing it is what i've seen always but uh, either you put the journal as a as an object that okay this is my book but that journal stays with himself and the reproduction gets circulated so um, yeah uh, i i don't know then where uh, i can put the value in in the in the origin uh, in the copy which is which i would like to call authentic or in the multiple reproductions that are happening so even he was not uh, comfortable with the idea of the print and uh, uh, like we have put his work as of now it's put on uh, digitally maybe we'll think of printing it later uh, but um, so it's like because of uh, conceptually things getting vague uh, these decisions uh, i'm not able to you know conclude um, i mean what could be what could uh, i'm only mostly talking uh, formally right now that uh, how to how to de define things into categories so those categories kind of um, are getting blurred uh, but yeah i mean we have the, these kind of seven artworks uh, mostly distinctive uh, put together and it's it's an experiment it's a beginning of an experiment the gallery wants to uh, continue this uh, see how it goes now here and uh, see what all can be done virtually and when times get wet, better uh, also see how this can be put together physically and uh, i'm sure that when um, this becomes physical it will not be the same way it would have been as we have we had thought earlier because this uh, virtual medium has uh, you know twisted all all sorts of notions so yeah i'm hoping something new might come out of this Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Nikhil. Just before you begin, I would just like to introduce you again for everybody else present here today with us. And thanks a lot, Ishida, for opening up uh, in such a engaging way and yeah, like questioning a lot of things because you can't conclude this at the moment. And it's it's good to have this as an open end for now. But yeah, so we have Nikhil with us, who's going to take us through the session uh, ahead. And uh, he is a visual arts professional working in the field of humanities, actively contributing to the cultural exchanges through arts administration. He has studied painting as a core subject and pursued ancient Indian history to understand the socio-cultural fabric of ancient civilization. Nikhil works with organizations and individuals to document their art practice and engages with art education to nurture and promote art artistic endeavors. He's based in Mumbai. His practice connects him with Mohile Parik Center, uh, the Indian Contemporary Art Journal, Amiti School of Fine Arts, and similar pedagogical platforms. He also has initiative Pandey dedicated to documenting the arts to promote heritage and its management. So over to you, Nikhil. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, Mehat. Uh, thank you, Ishita, for this wonderful uh, the premise you have uh, prepared for the discussion today. So. Uh, like as we go on uh, uh, the focus of the 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 engagement today is uh, also while we are looking at the exhibition is also to look at uh, the wider practice of each artist present on the panel today so uh, to begin with like what we have in common with us is that we participate and admire creative endeavors so today we gather online for a conversation uh, with the young aspiring artists attempting to establish their practices and uh, at the same time our methods of working have been drastically changed as Ishita mentioned here by uh, in, a, in a archaic manner or a, a caveman context that invisible tiger has been attacking us uh, and uh, we are scared of it and don't know how to actually respond and our uh, methodologies all have gone haywire and uh, yeah we are trying to cope up with the situation uh, while doing this uh, the intention of these webinars or the, the series uh, why I do what I do is an intention to reformulate and widen the scope of access of making, sharing and experiencing art to diverse audiences. 
and as part of uh, the untitled uh, five series uh, we have a diverse mix of artists as ishita mentioned uh, which both are nascent and formed practices and cumulatively they reflect the anxieties compassion lifestyle illusions and ontological disparities through their representations uh, book uh, we have come a long way from uh, being able to uh, re replicate books uh, manually through manuscripts and eventually uh, print making and wearing uh, having uh, forced to use spectacles because of a lot of reading what we did and today uh, on the same hand using digital uh, mediums uh, to engage with the text or the, uh, the text material in black and white or uh, various mediums possible so uh, we would begin uh, the congregation of the third uh, session today uh, where artists will present what triggers their work or the visual practices they have so uh, to begin with the the conversation uh, we have one artist uh, madhav nayar who would present uh, nuances to his practice and then eventually we will have a round of uh, question answers with each artist so uh, the panelists present with us today are madhav nayar veda thozur koleri uh, pratish bali durgadas uh, garai uh, unfortunately due to some personal reason he is not uh, able to connect with us today uh, parishit pisar rahi de roy and uh, tilottama bhomik so i request uh, madhav to begin with his presentation Um, am I sort of visible? I don't know so if it's visible here. That's fine. Yes, we we can see the. Yeah. Mm, that's that's okay. Um, so for my work, uh, uh, wait. First of all, thank you for having me on this thing. It's been a, quite a pleasure. I um, I'm glad this thing has um, finally come in live. and i'm happy to share what has influenced my work and generally informed the decisions i make um through my practice so uh, as i said i mentioned before um a lot what is on display at the show right now is this um journal and it essentially scan of it and um i mean if at any point like if you feel like if anyone feels like asking a question or jumping in that's totally fine this is really an open space um and yeah i i can flip through some of these pages but uh, what i thought would be interesting for this session to start with is kind of take you through the books that i've collected uh, or that kind of influence my practice so far and um like as i have mentioned before most of my practice surrounds comics and i cannot not mention mad this is called possibly like been the single most and biggest like influence in terms of making comics making independent thought am i audible yes 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 i should check before but yeah they've been pretty much single handedly got me into like making comics and making books and just the worth of content not a lot of this is really um the most sensible content out there but i mean it's fun so why not uh there's also to uh, meher could you uh, stop screen sharing so that we can uh, see uh, what uh, madhav is sharing properly with us yeah yeah i'll do yeah. that sorry thanks yeah okay super so yeah that's um this is and i mean actually we can go through these in detail but like i just have these in front of me um as far as artists go i guess like this finding this book probably changed everything about the way i do things and really um opened my ears into like exploring what images mean i mean a lot of my thinking from there is as far as like painting and as far as image making comes concerns comes from this person's work right here and like if i don't have a book of their work then i 
don't really tend to take their work seriously. Uh, but to scroll all the way back, um, I guess my first influence into making, or at least like my interest in illustration and drawing in general comes from this thing here. This book hasn't left the house in 10 years or more than that, I think. This was a gift to me um, on my 7th or 8th birthday. I don't quite remember, but it's quite an ancient book and it's quite fragile. Uh, the notes from my grandmother is still kind of there, but what I like about it is the notes that uh, her students gifted this book to her, and that's kind of still there saying, Dear ma'am, thank you so much for whatever in 1989. So, this book essentially is a collection of myths and legends um, from, I guess, of a bunch of different cultures. It starts with Greek and Roman mythology, but it goes on to Viking. In a very, in a very strange way, the, it's the illustrations that kind of really caught on to um, my eye. And this is really like a lot of my work, I guess, could be traced back to the way the text and the image and everything kind of work together. I mean, I, I, I have read this thing at least a million times and it's some of these images, this especially is the only way for me to remember the story of uh, Perseus and Medusa. And I guess at that age, images like these tend to be quite powerful and I'm very lucky to have had such a beautiful piece of um, literature with me. Um, I'll show you a few more pages from there, but see. Um, and what I've sort of noticed is that a lot of these stories did, and I mean, I, I have a feeling that a lot of the illustration was influenced by the fact that these were plays, and I don't know, this is just a theory that I have, but in the illustrations itself, a lot of the things look like stage decorations, though the actual architecture, but I mean, that's just me, like, gushing over how good this book is. Um, but yeah, there's a few more. I like it's not really useful, but some of it is, it's right there. So this is going to be buried with me. Um, be sure of that. Uh, what else can I show you? Yeah, I, I guess we can just go back to, um, Charles Byrne. Charles Byrne has really influenced the way I guess, uh, I mean, his work tends to be in the zone of the, I guess, cultish horror kind of thing. I know I'm not too sure how to classify his work, but um, that has been, I guess, like, just the way the person he uses, oh, wait, probably not the right way to show it, but like, yeah, it's just technically, it's just technically growing at its best. It's mastery of the instrument and it, I mean, it's just showing off at the end of the day. But um, yeah, that's, I guess the last thing I could show that I'm really mind is um, Ovidin. He is a Malayalam author who's possibly been um, I think I guess like the only Malayalam author that I really cared about. Um, and I'm very glad that I have like a book of his translated work with me, and he translated the world, his work himself, Smith, so that's very rare. But storytelling wise, I think that's something I've aspired to, um, uh, not replicate, but at least like try to tell the story, just the same kind of story. Even. It's from a different age. He wrote most of his stuff, most of his writing was kind of critiquing the emergency and um, Indra Gandhi's politics within there. But um, that also speaks to the kind of he used to make cartoons as well. And I, I'm still yet to find a good um, book of that. But he spent, I guess, five, six years of his life just making political cartoons about the Gandhi administration at that time. Um, yes, that's, that's showing off my book collection. Um, yeah, we can 
I'll talk more about this, but I guess like there's better images on the presentation itself. Uh, beyond that, what else can I talk about? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. Um, if you, if anyone has any particular questions or like would like me to go through all these things again, that's totally fine. But um, beyond that, I think, uh, I guess um, I'm uh, the silent comic part. I don't have those books with me, but there are a few comic artists active right now who are actively working in making silent comics. And why I think we all think that's important is that um, if you consider, say, like, just talking about comics for a second, the lar two largest industries in the comic industry, in the comic world right now, is the American movement and the Japanese movement in terms of manga or whatever. And what these, both these movements have in common is that the entire audience of this speaks one single language, which is a luxury we do not have in India. Um, multiple people have tried, multiple organizations have tried to bypass this by publishing comics in like 17 different languages. They're all, we all grew up with Amishita Kata, Raj Comics and Diamond Comics where well. like it was published in possibly every conceivable language that they could. But there is a limit to that. So silent comics, I feel, is an answer to that where we kind of bypass the requirement for text, but also that's kind of influenced the way I put images and narration, excuse me, uh, images and narratives together without really depending on written word and written text to um, hold your hand as such through the story. But yeah, that's, I guess that's a good like brief overview of the kind of work I do. Um, yeah, that's it. Sorry, okay. that was too short. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, uh, Meher, could you please uh, put up the uh, the slides? So, Madhav, like it, it was uh, fun watching you also sh uh, share these uh, books and uh, the kind of uh, uh, the engagement with you you have, or a kind of a intimacy with you uh, you have with these books and. Uh, yeah, so it, it's, uh, it was also fantastic to watch you do that exercise of pulling out those pages and showing it. And uh, yeah, it was indeed fun uh, and also uh, non-didactic to look at images and then interact. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, one, one question like uh, when we start watching uh, the current works or the, the, from the uh, book here, so uh, we find a certain sense of absurdity in it and there is a, a non-linear uh, narrative quality to it. So if you, if you could uh, elaborate more on that. Um, I feel like I did already. That's, that it comes from his work mostly, or at least like it's the effect that his work had on me and not just him. There's, there's a lot of uh, people within that movement that kind of stood on, but his work kind of, caught on to me the most because of the use of, I guess, like, he, I don't really, I mean, I might be speaking out of tongue, but I don't really think he tried too hard in finding images that were, he was using recognizable things and like, within just a simple, like, I mean, Jesus Christ, look, just turning like one part of it and like, really just, it's, it's, it started in the way that he, uh, Magritte used to uh, kind of toy with the images of, of the, the idea of text image and what you're presented with. And that's an experiment I like being part of as well. Um, so I'm not sure if absurdism is the right word for it, but like it, it kind of picks the most boxes uh, in terms of what I'm actively trying to do. Uh, but I guess like in, in like the conversation we had before this, the, um, it, it's what catches my attention. It's the kind of work that I appreciate. So um, it's always been uh, the initiative on my own just to be part of the group of people who do images like that and not really uh, assume anything beyond that, except that what is really going on. Like I tend to, appreciate images more when I come out of it with more questions and answers. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that's pretty mm -hmm. much. 
right right okay uh, we have already started getting questions uh, we will surely take the questions but slightly towards the end uh, there will be another round of uh, audio question answers with audience uh, while there is a very strong organic character to your works and uh, they are not uh, of course uh, the, the graphic quality and the hand drawn element uh, which they represent are strong and uh, this kind of i uh, slightly tangentially refer to uh, veda's uh, works in this case where uh, her recent works have a reference of uh, uh, the material kind of uh, bringing the different types of materials together and uh, uh, putting them in in a certain premise yeah so uh, i would ask the next question to uh, veda in this case uh, veda yes yeah so uh, like how do you uh, like looking at the diverse range of materiality and making your considering so uh, could you uh, give us the overarching premise of this venture of the, like there are a, a set of intimate drawings and as well as uh, the organic installations what uh, we can see on the screen right now um i think um, if i were to can you hear me well yes please please go ahead um if i were to trace it back it sort of um I, like my last year at shishti which was in 2015 2014 i think we worked on a year long project where um uh it was based on a, like in the area where a new metro station was being constructed so a lot of my explorations for that project were to do with uh, the different ways um in which one could access or like get a get a sense of like the context in which one is working because it was sort of like a public art project kind of thing and prior to that semester was when this book that's in the show in the exhibition uh, is being shown where i worked on a project uh, as part of a course that was at rex cinemas which is a single screen cinema that's being demol demolished and mm -hmm. it's going to be replaced by a multiplex and so on so um there i found that i mean in a place that's uh, where there's that where there's like space architecture or like space and people and the space has a particular function and the people people serve a particular function in that space so one way to understand the context prim primarily like when i enter a space that i'm not familiar with or try to understand it i usually do it through drawing so it was this process of drawing and then through drawing people sort of start to speak to you ask you questions kya bana rahe ho kyun bana rahe ho what is this about and so on and that that sets up like something of an informal relationship so i think this um those projects then uh, back then when i was in uh, shrishti was sort of emphasizing on that on my position as an outsider outsider to these contexts and how how best i can sort of um, the, there was sort of in my head i i suppose a responsibility in a sense to kind of understand the context before i make a work uh in the space you know and so the work that followed like after that i moved to dadri uh shivnadar university which is like uh radically different and then it, one could say that my practice took a radical turn in that i stopped speaking to people and it was more um it was a, it turned into like a, a largely studio based practice but i think the concern sort of uh Uh, there's a continued continuity in my concerns where again it was this attempt to kind of get a sense of like um the context in which because uh, that like the university campus is kind of located in a very specific context so everything's located in a very specific context but like there's always a sense of uh, uh, certain structures kind of attempting to er erase erase their relationship or erase their i mean set up like a particular um um how do i explain this well in the case of shivnarayan university for instance it it's in this rural context but um i mean it's in dadri surrounded by rural farmland but there there's a total disconnect between what the inside of the campus was and what the outside space was so it was for me i think this process of kind of trying to figure out or trying to um as as um understand what the what the space that we were located in was really about you know mm. i don't know if that answers the question but right like right. so it certainly uh, gives a context to us like uh, how it leads from 
the photo book to uh, this but uh, if you can uh, elaborate more on the, the choice of materials you are making to bring this uh, setup together uh, yeah i kind of i think i see it as like here it was this this like discards or organic discards that i found on campus so i kind of began through uh, the in like now i work with this kind of um, tree bark and um, snake skin and like use found material that i find on walks when i'm uh, exploring uh, spaces like walking through landscapes and i think this process of walking is also like something that's very integral to how i function it just works with my pace and it's like this slow pace of trying to understand um um my role in a space really and so then it's just this thing of uh, this thing of picking things up which we, which one always does and i think um it was it was in this context in in shivnadar that i kind of almost formalized that that act which was all of collecting which was otherwise kind of whimsical and like what doing it doing it on one's own but it became more conscious during my two years there and and then it sort of i think it it almost acts as like um it's like um this uh, how do, i don't know there's like um like uh a pie, the pie, like they constantly mow the lawns for instance so a lot of the material that i work with is the cut grass that i would find in piles mm-hmm. put aside or like um leaves when they fall they kind of uh, are swept aside so i pick up the swept aside leaves and work with it so it's things like that you know yeah. um and then uh, in addition to that like bringing in um, my own like other elements of like paper mache plaster and stuff to kind of embed these found elements and in some there's like this uh, um um uh, where they're propped up on stands often and i don't know if i've sent any detailed images but um, it's hard for me to talk without the images there right but yeah something like this so it's like it's like what the context is kind of like what the space uh, the remnants of, of of what the space once was i think is what i kind of work with yeah or like every stuff yeah. from yes Where could you uh, please scroll down? Like uh, we can see for the images. This is like a, a drawing that I've been working on recently. I mean, a series of drawings that I've been working on mm-hmm. recently. Um, yeah, this was this was in Beirut. What I did, where I spent ten months there on a in a program. So there it was again, like. trying to take like uh, um, like before this i done a project in kochi where i was working on the idea of i think it was when i was there the floods happened and so the floods kind of in form i mean became i always work i think i i mean not i think i know i work with like these eco, like a response from an ecological place or say that there's certain ecological concerns that form the backdrop of what i do and um so it was the idea of the floods and of how water kind of um, is something that draws attention to itself uh, when it's either in abundance like in a flood or in scarcity like in a drought so i was working with this relationship between soil and water and how um like the crack the formation of cracks on soil that kind of uh, and the the and how the cracks are kind of evidence that the soil was once soaked in water kind of thing hmm. you no know, so that's it's everything is like this attempt to identify the relationship between like two two materials and uh, what evidence is left of uh, the fact that these two interacted so what happens what is left when one body kind of exceeds the other you know through that interaction right. when one completely disappears when it's gone missing how do you find evidence that it even exists mm-hmm. i think yeah right, right. so while while uh, we look at the kind of uh, uh, juxtapositions or the gatherings what you're doing or the collections uh, you look around yourself on the contrary to your practice uh, we see uh, prithish's work here uh, to be uh, much more subdued muted in in many ways so i would ask the next question to uh, pritish uh, who is with us so uh, pritish could you please uh, elaborate on on this idea like where you uh, refer to uh, certain negotiations in your work and also you refer to poetry in in a certain manner so uh, what is it you accomplish from it is the sense of uh, 
what do you say, uh, uh, an achievement which you gain through these uh, markings which you make on the surfaces? Um, okay, so uh, so basically, drawing has been. Uh, I mean, can you hear me? Yes, Pratish. Please. Yeah. Please. Okay. So drawing has uh, genuine, like, generally been uh, like a way for me to uh, kind of bring my inquiries out there and you know to bring them out of thought and into something tangible or just as like a, a how do i say to, to to just bring them out there so and also along with that it's like a mode of catharsis for me mm -hmm. somewhere so in that in that manner uh, i think drawing plays a and like in this book drawing plays a really important role in whatever I do, be it the drawings themselves or, you know, formulating ideas for other things or for other works that I'm doing. And uh, I, yeah, so I think that is, if, if that is the closest to what you could associate with a sense of accomplishment that you talk about. Right, right. Okay. So then, uh, like, why a certain approach of minimalism or the kind of a, the, the pigmentation or subdued element you use. So how does this annotate your uh, ideas here? I mean, I think it's just the, the language has developed over a period of time and it's come out of artists that I respond to. And it's, I mean, it's like, it is an important device, right? So it's, it's just, it's a, div it's a formal device to right. kind of say what I want to say, which I, which is there in the images itself. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor, could we please uh, go on to the next images? So, uh, like then, while you are looking at the drawings in a certain way, like there are a, there is a sense, certain sense of flatness in it, uh, yeah. of course the the, uh, the relief aspect in it. So that continues throughout your uh, images, what we see in, uh, right now. So, yeah. why what is that consistency you are associating with? Um, I think one thing that uh, does fascinate me, uh, or a, especially while I'm drawing, is to kind of bring about the form of something that I'm drawing without without the change in the intensity of a line. I, I find that quite interesting to kind of bring about a form without actually, you know how like traditionally drawing, when, when somebody's teaching drawing, it's like you're taught that, you know, you kind of put more pressure or less pressure and you sort of give a dimension to the, to the drawing. And I like the idea of the consistency in in making marks while I'm drawing, but at the same time bringing about the form. And uh, yeah, right. and okay. yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so uh, moving on to the the next uh, set of uh, works here, which is of uh, belongs to Durga Das Garai. Uh, due to some technical reasons, uh, he could not participate in the discussion. Um, uh, uh, like uh, when we look at his range of works and he associates them with the struggles of his uh, native place where it be belongs, where he belonged to. So I would ask uh, Ishita here to uh, elaborate on, on, on his behalf. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, Ishita, please go. Yeah. So uh, I was saying um, uh, his uh, his approach in bringing together these images uh, has been very simple. That it's been a same recurrent thought, 
which is uh, of human suffering and disaster now he uh, is not uh, like in his words he is not clarifying that what kind of disaster he is talking about uh, whether it is natural or uh, political or whatever kind but uh, but it's very broadly disaster and human suffering so uh, as Uh, like um, the work from the works I've seen of his, uh, it's he tries to get uh, kind of get into he he gets into formal uh, formal uh, forms like uh, uh, known forms either human forms or objects but something which is recognizable uh, and from that he it it's quite fluid he works with those and then he also gets into abstraction and forms which cannot be recognized so uh, this thing i find interesting that if he is trying to uh, you know portray human suffering how when how you show suffer, represent uh, or um, evoke this feeling of suffering through uh, forms that can be recognized and uh, and the other forms which uh, like his abstract forms make me think that okay when we begin to understand connect with these kind of emotions we start thinking about uh, stories of somebody we might know or ourselves and then mentally we do uh, when we are thinking of emotions we get into these mental spaces where uh, things might not make sense like that feel is there that okay i'm feeling happy or i'm sad but a lot of times we do not No, it's like when you dream you don't always dream of uh, concrete forms and they become very abstract so that's what from whatever work i have seen seen of his and specifically in this uh, book um, that's how i see him that's what i see him na- navigating from uh, like familiar to unfamiliar uh, but just repeatedly thinking through um, suffering and disaster Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Ishita, for that insight. Um, hmm. With the kind of trail of uh, the acromantic uh, charcoal or the, the print making rendering here, so, uh, I would move on uh, to asking Parikshit uh, with us, uh, who has a significant uh, uh, black and white con- consistently uh, referring to uh, uh, different calligraphic uh, approaches or making icons which resemble uh sort of pictograms and uh, yet they are different and rather perhaps at certain moments they might not have a certain set of meanings which we intend to when we look at text so uh, so parikshit if you could uh, elaborate on what is the base you are looking at when you are uh, primarily uh, relying on the instinct or intuition while making these uh, Iconic representations through repetition. Parikshit. Is he there? I don't think he's here. Yeah. Okay. Now he he was also facing some internet issue. Okay. Maybe uh, we. get back to him if if we can get get him back on the list we can get back to him sure sure we'll we'll do that we'll do that yeah so uh, uh yes so quickly now we will move on to uh, asking question to rahi in this case and uh, uh yeah uh, next images please yeah so uh there is a, a very strong sense of enquiry which is uh, inherent in uh, uh, rahi's work so and uh, knowing that uh, through conversation and also uh, learning that she has been trained under the rishi valley school and uh, exposed to uh, directly and in, in a subjun manner to uh, j krishnamurti's philosophies uh, so which it triggers a strong enquiry in every human so uh not a, a particular philosophical or a spiritual manner but a strong objective uh, inquiry so which is also a part of her work and uh, so i ask uh, you rahi that uh, what is this motivation of questioning 
or a kind of a, a uh, limits which demark the human actions uh, you refer to and what are these margins you uh, bring about in through your work uh, thanks nikhil so uh, i would not say that uh, i was uh, i mean the the influence of the school and of krishnamurti's philosophy has been uh, in a way it, it has not been a very direct influence but it has just been that uh, being in that atmosphere and being in a space like that for over um eight years would have some kind of an impact on a child growing up mm-hmm. so uh, just in that way but uh, yeah. i wouldn't say that it has uh, directly uh, shaped up my practice in any way though of course there is a lot of indirect no precisely uh, uh, sorry to cut but yeah of course uh, when one says like uh, the schooling has its own bearing and eventually uh, perhaps it is the crux that uh, one uh, once when uh, you come out of that bearing then you start negotiating with your own understanding and yeah. that also uh, triggers a series of questioning your own position and uh, either be it existential or uh, looking at the surroundings and and the your, the, the placement of your own self yeah yes so i was always uh, very interested in this uh, idea of uh, the interaction between something that seems uh, to be very imaginative very whimsical and something which is uh, sort of accepted as the opposite end of that something which is accepted as an absolute truth as something that uh, just is a fact and or uh, doesn't and is very precise is very measured and is does not necessarily have anything to do with uh, the imagination as such and I, even when i was or uh, studying or even later I, i always find that an interesting uh, division to sort of turn uh, on its head because uh, you know when we take something like a scientific system or some whatever like the structure of an atom or the solar system those things are also um, imagined by someone and those things also they don't exist in the world in the way that we see them uh, are you able to hear me yes yes please go on yeah in in the way that uh, probably we saw them in in diagrams in our textbooks so you know that that idea that a diagram is something which is representing reality and a painting is something which is sort of representing an imagined reality that division was something that i wanted to sort of um, mess around with and also this uh, you know the idea that uh, the sciences uh, and the social world are something different or maths and uh, m- uh, mathematical measurements and the social world is something uh, that are entirely different you know it's all uh, mixed up in reality and i think there can be something interesting um, that we find when we uh, try to see uh, what are what are the social uh, uh, concepts that can be linked with an idea like measurement that can be linked with a structure like the structure of a notebook Uh, and i've always also been attracted to uh to mediums that are very accessible that are very simple like photocopying something or in in a notebook or something did did i i hope i addressed your question yes yes, yes. and also like and then uh, if you can uh, uh, narrate more about uh, the organic elements you refer to in this in this case the the type of images what we are looking at Yeah. yeah so these are some of my uh, etching and aquatint works i was always uh, very much attracted to uh, organic forms i find i find an instant connection and i like that uh, complication of forms like there's something and there's something inside it something behind it and there's like a jumble of things so that that was always something uh, fun for me to draw and that's what attracted me here as well and uh, somewhere i i uh, drew the things that i observed and a few things from memory as well but that that sense of tactility that sense of uh, touching something that's rough and crumbly uh, was something that i wanted to express right great great um uh, thank you rahi so i i uh, ask uh, tiluttama uh, about her practice in this case like where uh, 
there is a, a, a again as we saw in case of uh, madhav so there is also a certain uh, continued sense of uh, narration in her work uh, but here in this case it is more personal and uh, also uh, there are connotations of sexuality and uh, gender based uh, understandings in her work so uh, tilotama how do you respond to these ideas and how do you place them pictorially okay um, am i audible properly yes tilotama please please go on. thank you thank you nikhil uh, so uh, i would like to uh, start uh, from my other works because it's the uh, yeah is the part of uh, this work yes yeah. so uh, in uh, 2019 i uh, worked uh, id fix the uh, idea of id fix so here uh, uh, i i am i'm showing if you see these images can it uh, more close uh, like zoom that previous image can we zoom it this image a little bit uh, okay no no more okay yeah thank you that's okay so uh, actually my practice start from drawing and painting and uh, and after that uh, when i uh, started the process of storytelling uh, so it was my uh, one kind of challenging uh, position that how I uh, make the space for viewers so that they can interact into my works. So if you see here, I uh, try to make a, a book format and uh, here is a, a book uh, which uh, is uh, called Breast Stone uh, written by Mahashata Devi. Mm -hmm. And uh, that book actually uh, the starting point of uh, my this book in sin. Uh, I try to fit myself. So uh, here, Mahishate Devi very uh, very nicely like a very. Uh, in, this is the interesting point how uh, Mahishate Devi uh, symbolized breast, uh, sharply indicating uh, the. Um, and an exploitative suicide system and uh, here uh, this concern that I use like uh, fabric and paper so this is also very uh, uh, like why I use this material here so it's a very uh, uh, I feel that it's a very close uh, uh, goes to me like the material every day we use the paper and the uh, 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 fabric so uh, the book uh, I, I keep uh, audience uh, to go through the book and read the book and they can mark it and while I was reading this book I uh, uh, made a, a gene uh, to three, three uh, gene where I kept some empty pages so that, uh, you know, uh, viewers can come and they can read that book and they can visualize because word itself has a visual sense. So how they, you know, interact in the reading process. So it was uh, my main interesting point, also the challenging point. So. I choose the book format and now I try to practice this uh, book formation uh, also along with uh, my uh, my previous practice. So like when we go outside or whatever the book uh, it very uh, intimacy uh, uh, object uh, like if we go uh, outside in, in there is a street uh, paper uh, stand so people can read easily or if you see magazine or book we easily pick up and we turn the pages and we see so yeah that's how it's actually started and yeah and while i'm uh, okay now i can talk about uh, yeah so now i can talk about the book uh, why it uh, mm, uh, insane name it actually my uh, own experience also uh, the reading book of uh, Mahashata Devi and another story I forgot to mention that is uh, Nanjali 
the brave women who uh, protested uh, uh, against the oppressive uh, race tax in the 19th century in Travancore village in Kerala. So uh, reading these two stories and uh, as my position in uh, as a woman in, in society, so so the insane is try to fit myself uh, 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 was also in the same track of processing of course and uh, there is a reality like which is what is going on now and in the past and in future and uh, though this uh, like also the two forms the insane uh, are presently relatively by community to community so yeah uh, so yeah that's all okay. right right so uh, can I, uh, if you could uh, uh, give more insights about the connection to literature and your uh, pictorial representation so how does that conversion happen okay so uh, like I'm, i am i am saying that the storytelling process i this this way like in childhood we usually uh, uh, attract the storybook and a poem or illustration so then after that there is a place then when we had a lots of big textbook and where visual is you know uh, uh, somehow uh, just uh, just uh, what i said just gone so in my case then after that in 2018 uh, i did one workshop in fika uh, Mm. Uh, there is a workshop of the storytelling and again i actually the recall my childhood memories to till uh, so how i can narrate the situation and I, how i can uh, you know go through the literature process the book because as i said before the word when we see or any text or any sentence it uh, it it has own imagination or it has a, a own visual sense and it is obviously different uh, uh, person to person so maybe one word i see i visualize uh, differently from others so right. this is very interesting point so there is this free space to you know expand the imagination right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, th thank you Tilutama, for that um, i will ask uh, i'll uh, continue to ask Ishita about uh, how do you look at uh, the range of uh, uh, practices you have brought together. So what is a common thread you would uh, look into their practices? Mm. I think uh, it's very difficult for me to say that even uh, if I do uh, find a common thread, actually, uh, so far I haven't been thinking uh, through the point of view of apart from very obviously we trying to put together books. Uh, uh, I mean, as I told you before, that there are some artists uh, artists in this, uh, specifically three people who whom I see uh, formally and uh, like the process seems similar. Um, uh, Tilatama, Pratish and Rahi, not just that they are uh, making drawing, uh, just like Pratish mentioned that uh, even the um, molds he was making, sort of sculpt sculptural objects, they have this thought process of how to make mark, which is drawing. And uh, even uh, Rahi is exploring uh, making marks uh, through the marks which are already given to us and we have to follow. Um, I mean, uh, listening to Tilatama now, I'm thinking, I mean, uh, even though uh, I've been looking at this as a similar approach, but uh, her approach is coming from a vast other, uh, you know, uh, as a singular thought, but then a lot more uh, ways of working. And uh, yeah, I would say uh, one, uh, Madhav, Madhav's work I have seen and uh, uh, like what from whatever I have seen I can straight away start thinking of uh, book making but apart from him if I have to put everybody together um, 
the most common thread uh, i can only think of that okay i won't uh, term them as book artists because i have seen uh, artists who specifically uh, begin with the format of the book and that that format becomes very important and the conceptual explorations that they do they come through the format so here uh, i am not seeing that so that's why i'm saying apart from mother who has a very very specific in influence of books uh, and uh, from when i uh, like uh, when uh, i was in con uh, conversation with priyashri in the beginning um, and th that's when i was thinking of okay if it's a book art exhibition let me look at practices who function uh, purely through books uh, but what came across is actually the opposite like what happened and yeah so i uh, that's the interesting part i, I think it's good yeah, well, precisely like uh, that's in fact uh, the thing that uh, certain things like while we are there looking at the range of practices not just only in this case of uh, uh, the current panel uh, but we have been looking at uh, since the first uh, series what we started so uh, while uh, having a conversation one starts looking at a thread, common thread but uh, that thread yeah. is apparent only while the conversation is happening together and then it kind of uh, interestingly uh, vanishes off and then uh, the practices are isolated uh, again and like they go uh, the artists work they go back to their studio then uh, it becomes an uh, individual practice in that case i think you know yeah, and, um, oh. i wanted to also add uh, yes. actually i think what is really common which i see uh, besides calling it uh, the book project is that the vision for a better future and uh, also uh, you know the stall by the rise of this religious bigotry unequal distribution of wealth rampant invasions and ecological crisis this is what i see common commonality Right. and uh, i think the stories of our times are character characterized by our, the uncertainty which we are going through i think the uncertainty is the common ground here which i see uh, probably in uh, all the uh, you know recent interactions i've had with various people whether they are artists or they are musicians or they are people from the corporate world so of course uh, you know i think we should we should take a pause to you know we're narrating the chronicles of the contemporary and uh, also uh, documenting what is happening today so yeah. that is also a commonality if you go to see so the you know the work of art uh, basically in our times reflects the uh, the you know the uh, un uh, uncertainties and the existence of this contemporary human existence which is also in in question today so if you look at it like that i see commonality there right. but uh, what is interesting also which i wish uh, you can talk about more is that you know um, about this whole uh, project called the book project now the whole question is what is a book you know with kindle uh, now uh, in the hands of the common man and uh, the moving images uh, what is the book if i ask you nikhil and i ask you ishita what would you describe a book you know in in inverted commas right uh, yeah uh, ishita would you like to begin or uh, do you want me to go first um i was actually about to bring up the idea of uh, linearity we talked about uh, i think somebody was speaking about it and now that you say i'm thinking that okay uh, all these practices that we put together all these books that we put together specifically for this exhibition the um, idea of book relating to linearity has been broken uh, and because i don't see in anybody's book uh, if there is a common uh, a linear narrative to follow it can be we can start the book from anywhere uh, even though in veda's book it's a it's uh, the narration narrative is following a particular person's life events but those like it's like uh, yeah it can actually be uh, taken from anywhere uh, now um, in like exploring these formats what becomes a book uh, how do i <laughs> conclude on that now as just as i said that the uh, the aspect of linearity itself got broken so it's like the basic uh ideas of 
definition of a uh, book is getting broken uh, because when i was trying to uh, formulate the concept note that what this exhibition could mean apart from just being a formal thing that okay it's a book art exhibition and i got into looking uh, about and uh, looking at definitions of book and that is just like you cannot you can find a definition of book of course but uh, you will go go into different directions so uh, to conclude on this yeah of course if i say i'm going to i'm reading a book i'm going to buy a book in generic terms nobody will think that i'm okay i'm looking at a video or looking at some uh, you know images put together so um, uh, so i think this uh, um this context of uh, uh, art contemporary art is what distinguishes these books from generic books uh, that's that's the thing and we are always trying to redefine Uh, so here we are also again trying to redefine uh, this idea of book. Yeah. So uh, to uh, take it slightly in a tangent context, like uh, I have I have a, a habit of uh, looking at the the verb aspect of the words. So even while I was in the uh, the academics, I preferred looking at when you say to draw. So there is a sense of drawing, like referring to an action. so if we uh, consider the verb aspect of book here so it is to book something right so basically to register something in uh, in in a single place so now that format of booking can be varied and of, of course in the context in the current context uh, it can be digital at the same point of time so uh, as long as that element of booking continues so uh, it can be registered in uh, multiple ways and also uh, consumed in in multiple ways at the same time so i would look at the idea of book in in, in through a verb rather than an adjective or a noun in this case hmm. if you're talking about verb i'm thinking of the idea of reading now so we always say uh, uh, we are reading a book uh, it reminds me uh, they i think last year uh, there there was a show in delhi uh, bit of an experimental show it was about reading hmm. and it was a lot of artists work put together and curated in such a way it, it talked about reading and there were zines and there were different kind of books but uh, there were also video installations there was uh, uh, like uh, an experience room where uh, you know uh, there is audio so I, i mean so you're reading an audio you're reading a video and uh, it that that space can also be experienced like there was uh, a particular uh, seating arrangement made where you can sit and read there were diaries uh, uh, personal diaries visual journals so yeah so it's just extending the idea of uh, like uh, the verb uh, reading becomes very important when it comes to book so how you define reading as well right right yeah uh in fact uh, you have start you are getting me started on this and it's it's funny to also look at uh, the idea of uh, the text itself or literature is being read to uh, the manual reading aspect of looking at images uh, which are textual in format and then accessing them and reading it out so uh, the primary idea of writing down is also about being read to so the, the hearing the sounds so fundamentally the words which are combined together of course uh, right now we are slightly uh, digressing from the the primary context here but yeah uh, so we will uh, at this junction i'll open out the uh, the platform to audience and uh, if there are questions uh, please feel free to ask the artists and uh, yeah so there are a couple of uh, questions here we will begin by those and uh, the audience can type in or also uh, directly ask the questions to the artists so yes uh, so, uh, so i think both the questions are di uh, directed to madhav in this case so with uh, kindle coming in the into the common man's hand is it that the paper and print book becoming more exclusive and now being used by an artist as a medium uh, i think i'll uh, just read the second one as well probably it, it might be contextual to do so uh for uh, what future do you see for books by artists in india 
is there mention of uh, book art in arts and academics as a mainstream art i think the second question can be uh, uh, answered by uh, either of the panelists and uh, the first yes madhav would you like to respond here um can you repeat the first question i'm sorry pardon can you repeat the first question i'm so sorry uh, it, it is in, in reference to with kindle coming into the common man's hand so is it the paper and print book becoming more exclusive and now being used by an artist as a medium that no i don't think so um it's been a while since the kindle or like digital publishing in general has been part of uh, the theme in general i feel like people have kind of i don't think it's really elevated that thing much but we do have a sense i mean a printed version or a physical version of something still does have some value and i guess i still put value in that as well um but i don't think that um it's anything new i don't think that thought has really changed much um i'm not sure if i'm answering the question properly but i i only think that with the advent of digital publishing it it makes the access part of it more relevant um especially in a time where we cannot really count on physical interactions being the way to legitimize something so it the the gallery show so um that said um it it doesn't really no i don't think it um makes it I, I don't think I understood. Can you read that question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, it was mainly like uh, now when one looks at uh, book making. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, when we look at uh, now, artists are a significant number of artists are moving towards uh, putting their ideas together in a series of pages where we it, it can be compiled as a book, right? Sure. So one that reference of making a book is becoming significant. and on the contrary uh, this uh, the idea of reduced printing or uh, using or buying books and uh, of course there is always a set of uh, readers who prefer uh, physical copies but again the the readability or the access to text is largely becoming uh, digital in that context so uh, what do you think about medium and perhaps i think uh, uh, rest of the artists also who can uh, uh, pitch in in this context um i don't think it's relevant anymore i don't think um especially within this year like i said before it really doesn't um we we we're going through that change right now as we speak where we kind of assuming that just being able to access it visually or like through an online thing is enough to consider ourselves to be part of a real experience right 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 okay um yes so there is one more uh, question what does the meaning of a book mean uh, listening is book or reading or seeing uh, how does one put a prose to a book made by an artist when we think of books we think of multiple may i add something yes yes of course please please uh, no there's a lot of questions and um, a lot of thoughts but i mean i mean in response to the kind of things that are being discussed i think like the uh, digital distribution of, i mean like it's a question of like distribution and that's what the kindle has kind of brought in or like ebooks it's about how many people have access to these books like madhav said and um i don't necessarily think that it's uh, something that's new i mean i, I i'm not entirely familiar with like the history of um uh, of the formal history of art artists and book books but like i just wanted to say that there's always like this uh, like 
at least with me and um, with some of the um, artists I've worked work closely with, like even with Meher or with Ishita, there's always a, like a process of um, recording one's process uh, while one's working through something. And that invariably takes, like say we write it in a, in a notebook, you know, and then when there is this uh, attempt to kind of articulate this process, it almost by default goes into, uh, I mean, in the written form, it, it, it almost by default goes into this um, journal mode of kind of uh, a book, I think. And in terms of like, I think what uh, holds a book together, I'd say is like, it's, it's like, I would see it as something that's a formal arrangement of either text or images. You know, like say um, curating an exhibition is like a curating of like certain kinds of works, work in space. Um, in the case of a book, it's, uh, it's even if the book itself um, doesn't follow a linear narrative, there is an addressing of narrative of some sort, of, in some way, uh, by the person that makes the book, um, where you're either working with it or working against it. And you're kind of viewing all of this in an intimate way in like, uh, it's like a, it's a, like a one-to-one -one exchange as opposed to something that happens. I mean, it's like a very, it's an intimate exchange between like reader or viewer and, uh, right. author. and, um, I think, and, and, and the, um, what, how, what, what would we call it? The series of images or the pages that we flip are kind of, continuous in that sense. I mean, it's like a continuous, I don't know, um, but it's like, I mean, that's how I see your book. It kind of begins there and, and then, it, so it begins in this traditional idea of what you think of a book, but then, and you're dealing with these very traditional, I, I mean, um, like when you start out to make a book, you start from like the very basic thing of what a book is. You think of pages, you think of flipping, you think of, you know, a, a series of images or a series of, uh, bits of writing and, and you think of a narrative and then like you begin, that, you begin there and then you kind of expand uh, all the many ways in which you can, you can address this and you kind of, I mean, that's how I understand it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's certainly uh, uh, an interesting insight and uh, 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 we also need to respect the time uh, of this panel discussion and uh, before we uh, move to the conclusion, uh, I would like to ask uh, a common question to everyone here uh, that uh, in, the con in the context of bringing this uh, practice together, like each of you, not necessarily all of them have a um, book making kind of practice like Madhav and uh, uh, Pritish in, in this case where they are referring to certain images and uh, it can come together, even Tilotama in that case. So how do you all... Uh, refer to this uh, congregation coming together? Yes. So uh, any, anyone, uh, either of you can please respond. Hello. Uh, uh, can I add something? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, can I just add something? Yes, okay. I have some, uh, like I had a uh, confusion and even now, like how book, because for me book, you mean to, uh, you know, touch and smell. Uh, so, but how uh, print, uh, like, uh, I mean, uh, online uh, book uh, as a, faster in in faster uh, um, ishita as i said that uh, it's a one kind of video when we like flipping you know the book pages so flip book as as i said so i have a confusion like how it uh, it plays well in this context you know as a book because book is something we have to touch uh, we have to smell it and uh, yeah, so I don't know how it will uh, because nowadays everyone seeing uh, you know in in digital format book. 
so even when i'm seeing the uh, you know uh, flip book uh, our, our book in here so somehow the uh, uh, the the visual or text can't reach we can't reach so somehow it distract also the viewers also distract to uh, seeing uh, yeah so it, even it's, it's actually yeah i think the process uh, we are uh, doing right now maybe it will be it will be uh, make any sense later right I think uh, what Tilatama is uh, referring or, or posing a question is uh, the uh, the evolving dynamics of accessing or again uh, what Ishita also uh, set on to in her uh, introductory uh, uh, note is that uh, we are looking at book in, in various forms and how do we assimilate or respond, consume, exchange and all sort of uh, dynamics are uh, uh, fast changing or uh, the patterns are varying in different contexts. So yeah, I think uh, that is a question for a larger, uh, 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 what do you say, uh, another set of uh, questioning and about the book making and the, the book, uh, the aspect of how you go about uh, the elements of uh, creating a book. Yes. So uh, I think uh, considering the time uh, limit and uh, uh, it's it's ideal to, uh, we come to a conclusion of the session here. Uh, and of course, uh, one can continue these uh, intimate uh, and uh, wonderful insights of each artist what we are looking at. So how do you uh, uh, like... Sorry. Uh, so, like, uh, we need to uh, look at a sense of like these uh, uh, fragments which are coming together through the series of artworks and uh, the practices, individual practices, and which are being uh, put up in a conversation and uh, creating a rubric of a sort where they all come together and uh, the audience and uh, everyone is being able to see them together. And I think that that is the beauty of uh, the, this fabric, which is being woven through these conversations. And uh, in fact, it was uh, an amazing journey uh, so far. And to look at each of your practice and also getting connected uh, through those uh, nitty gritties of what you, you are doing in your own uh, personal spaces. So yes. So over to you, Meher uh, and Priyash. Thanks a lot for that engaging session, Nikhil. I thanks all the participants to come in today and have this discussion. I'm sure we can, like, there are lots of questions arising out and I hope we can connect personally with each other and uh, expand on these areas and maybe have more webinars over these things. And uh, yeah, just, but just to quickly respond to Telotama, I think it does, uh, like, uh, this set setting of uh, showing works on a digital platform, it does limit down to a lot of works which are like I don't think all the works are able to and we can put them out on a digital platform so it does limit out to like it may create sections and there are uh, works which are limited and then that's the thing that we can show it out but yeah expressing everything and uh, I think putting everything out is not possible so I think it this this medium is does playing its role over all of us as artists and yeah, I think I would uh, um, direct it to Priyashi to, I think, uh, for the vote of thanks and then we would be closing the session. Priyashi, do we have you? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Meher. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, all the participants to have this uh, amazing exhibition called The Book Project. And uh, honestly, uh, listening to all of you, I think that uh, we need to have one more session. So Nikhil, sir, please, uh, uh, if everybody is okay with it, we should actually uh, exchange some messages about the questions which have come in the minds of the uh, participants and the questions which have come in the minds of the people who are watching us today. So we should address it once again if Nikhil uh, sir is okay with it. And uh, thank you, Meher. Thank you, uh, Ramsha, Rohita for behind the scene. And I hope to see you once again to carry on this conversation. So I am not concluding anything. Thank you.
Thank you.